Okay. We're recording. Go ahead. Okay. We just lost Matt, so we don't have a quorum. Okay. okay so I just want to welcome everyone. My name is Angela Mills. I work for the town of Amherst. This is a recording of the Amherst Cultural Council. And I want to thank everyone on the council for all of their hard work. You've been putting in the long hours. So thanks, everyone. And at this time, I want to recognize the co chair, Julianne. Thank you, Angela. Appreciate it. And the recording's in progress? It is in progress. We are recording to the cloud and it will be put on the YouTube channel shortly. Okay, thank you. Have a good evening. So I'll read the statement pursuant to chapter 20 of the acts of 2021. This meeting will be conducted via remote means. Members of the public who wish to access the meeting may do so in the following manner on the town uh, amers.ma.gov website for the recording. <clears throat> no in-person attendance of members of the public will be permitted, but every effort will be made to ensure that the public can adequately access the proceedings in real time via technological means. In the event that we are unable to do so for reasons of economic hardship and despite best efforts, we will post on the town website an audio or video recording transcript or other comprehensive record of the proceedings as soon as possible after the meeting. Roll call, starting with Cody. Thank you. Although we are still having internet problems with you. Uh, Rachel. I'm here. Thank you. Eleanor. Here. Matt. Here. Thank you. All right. We are all set. Very good. Uh, I guess um, just to kind of give everybody an update of where we are with the deliberations, uh, we have roughly about 30 more to go. So the pace that, that we've been proceeding at has been going pretty well. And um, unless anyone has any urgent business i suggest that we get right back into it because basically we should be able to get through everything tonight and then monday and then we would have the full session on wednesday um, for for voting and as matt had presented uh last week that we would um we will be sending based on the notes and the discussion that we've been you know kind of doing the running tally we'll send a, a proposed balanced budget ahead of time for everyone to review um, and and be able to uh, finalize this Wednesday night if we keep on track. All set then? I'm ready. All right. Timer. Let's go. Thank you. Uh, our next um, grant is from Rita Parisi, and this is Gothian Victorian Tales by Candlelight. Uh, and it would be Monday, October 30th next year at the Amherst Senior Center. The request is for $500. And collectively, um, we scored this as, let me find my place again. Mm, we scored this as a 2.29. And um, there were no, no particular comments. It should serve about 50 people. Uh, Gothic Victorian Tales by Candlelight is a theatrical adaptation of Three Weird Tales by Sarah Orne Jouett. Uh, I think I said that wrong. She's considered uh, an important 19th century regional writer whose stories reflect New England and its people. Uh, she grew up in South Berwick, Maine and would often go to her doctor and father to visit patients. Um, let me see if I can get so basically this grantee has adapted three of her gothic stories by editing them while still retaining her meaning and much of her original words and phrasing the audience is hearing the words um while uh it's rita right Re is portraying the narrator um and all of the characters in the story so this is not a reading it's a performance and it includes uh, small sets props light and Q&A afterwards, it's about 60 to 70 minutes uh, duration and something about video on website. I don't quite know what that means. So uh, there anyone who would like to champion uh, this grant? Hi, Robin. Hi. Sorry, I'm late. We're happy you're here. You know, I mean, the, the one comment is, again, we have to look at everything um, as far as the, the senior center and, uh, 
this is the, the full budget um, for this. And um, once again, um, the senior center is saying our budget does not allow us to supply extra programs. So they just are hoping that we'll consider fully funding it. What number are we on? Sorry. We are on number, number, number. 61, I think. Okay. 60, 60. Read oh. I love it. I I love it. I kind of wish it was being performed elsewhere in addition to the senior center, you know, and for a larger audience, but um, we have to go through the grant as as submitted. Um, I, I think it's great that it's an original work. Um, however, uh, let's let's see what said if if we are not fully funding how she would do do this. Um, she says that she would ask the Amherst Senior Center to contribute financially, or she'll offer a small discount if not fully funded. So not sensing a whole lot of so, um, yeah yeah I, well i wanted to say you know i love it as well um but i do think that when we do our final tally we should probably go through and and do a um sort of comprehensive look at senior center grants and and probably adjust those down by a certain percentage just to reflect our need for diverse grantees i think that that kind of fits our mm -hmm. guidelines yep and then I, I do think julianne and i as co-chairs should probably reach out to the senior center and have a conversation about um, what their funding structure is, and I, I just I feel like there's something systemic that's happening here with a lot of their prospective artists mm -hmm. coming to us and having very similar letters, and I just think that's that's a conversation we should have with them, um, and then maybe we can help advocate for their funding, but for their recreational budget with the town. Um, mm -hmm. But I'm not sure that this is system, something systematically that we want to be. I'm not sure this is where we want to plug ourselves in. Yeah, and I'd, I'd have to say that as far as the numbers served, um, being just 50 people, even even though I think the caliber of this, you know, would would warrant full funding um, because of the small audience numbers, I'd probably drop it to, to 350 anyway. I would be good with that. Yeah, yeah, Robin. Um, I was thinking about this and I'm is it any different than the things that are happening at the Jones Library? It's a venue. And I have a feeling that some of this is because this is where they're finding a venue. Um, I think that was true Davis Bates, with, but we kept extending and then he finally found that he could do his gig at the Senior Center. Um, I It's not very big, so I guess yeah, we really can't expand on the numbers, even though it's open. So mm -hmm. it's, but that's my guess that some of it is because that's the place they have found and they could look. I think that's a, that's, that's a fair point. Mm -hmm. um, however, this is a venue that serves a very, you know, very important and obviously, you know, a, a, sub, a section of the community we want to support arts and culture to. But it's a very defined um, segment of the community versus, you know, the library is is for everybody. Mm -hmm. I would, yeah. So I mean, I, I think the reality is that we're going to have to be adjust these down anyway. So point point noted about you know the the location. But in addition to it being that location, we have a letter of support saying that this program is is for that community. Mm. We, are we good to progress? Okay. So the next is from Julia Peterson. If anyone isn't um, speaking, it'd be great if we could try muting again because we're having that issue again. And this is making space for the fiber curious Danish weaving book translation project. And it's going to occur spring and fall of 2023 uh, and throughout 2023. Okay, it's at the barn Theater and Studios in Belchertown, and also it is in, um, sorry, Shelburne Falls, let me see, I guess it's going to be, uh, and, and South Carolina, all right, um, so they are asking for $1,000 and expect to serve about 140 folks, uh, collectively, we, um, 
scored this as a 2.29. And um, there were uh, some comments about it as far as one person said it's in Belchertown. Someone else said it's very good. Someone else said not sure about the translation component, but the workshops are excellent and appreciate the accessibility comment. So this is a project where they're going to translate out of print uh, an out of print Danish weaving book. Uh, I won't even try to pronounce it. You can read it because I will mangle it. And um, it encompasses translating, formatting, and digitally uploading a companion guide to this out of print book. And it showcases historic textiles from Denmark. The book will be shared online for free and include um, included in the fabric of life's growing digital collection. Uh, they're intending to continue running multiple sessions of the fiber workshop series, which uh, is open to self identified queer people from across Western Massachusetts who are fiber curious. I will be leading lessons about weaving and overall uh, hosting a space for the creation analysis and exploration of, of fiber during the workshops. Uh, they'll be creating fiber art through weaving embroidery sewing as well as uh, drawing and painting to conceptualize project ideas. So would anyone like to champion this grant? Yes, I, yes, I, I actually would. I, I am the person who said, I'm not sure about the translation component in terms of what we typically do, but I just love, I mean, I love the fact that it's a, you know, a diverse art form. Um, I really, I, I would love to fully fund it um, to, to kind of recognize and celebrate the accessibility piece here um you know she talks about being somebody who lives with chronic pain and, and you know just that focus on uh underserved population so i realize it's a fairly large ask and it's not the biggest group etc i mean there's reasons not to fully fund it but i think in terms of the spirit of what we're doing and trying to have a diverse range of uh media and performances i think this is one that i you know that i would fight for as we get closer to the you know to those kind of final decision phases yeah, and, and they are applying to five other LCCs, so um, they're, they're, they're not asking us any, for anywhere near the full budget. Um, and it, it, it is, again, um, both something that somebody can participate in, you know, and um, I, I, I like the component of um, translating, you know, the outer print book, too. I don't know about fully funding, though. That's, that seems like a big ask. And what the number served was um, mm, one forty. Is that right? One forty. I guess it's kind of hard to to understand there. You know, as far as is it one hundred and forty people in the workshops, or that seems like a lot of people in the workshops. Maybe. I mean, even if only one hundred forty people read this book, I also think there is something to be said for you know. Although, although I don't know that we do this kind of translation funding, mm -hmm. it is it is neat to um, be a part of something that you know that will literally introduce a new book to a new audience of folks who wouldn't see it otherwise. You know oh, what I, I mean? So, I would think we would fund something like this. I don't think it's not just translation. It's it's a bit right more than that. So and, and yeah, that's the interactive culture. piece. Yep. Um, I guess it's Robin. Um, I have the same questions I had last year when they applied. Um, I don't, is, well, and more, is this also a workshop and is the workshop only for people who are queer identified? And if it is, are we allowed to do that? Yeah. And is the barn accessible? And I can't find a contact number or email or any way to contact the barn theater but they didn't used to have accessible bathrooms, that I know. And they were working on upgrading, but I'm not quite sure what happened. So, and this comes up again with at least one other grant application. Is, mm -hmm. is that building accessible? Yeah, and I guess last year we spent quite a bit of time talking about that while it's the, the community that they're kind of doing the outreach to and, and encouraging to participate um, is very specific. I think we came to the conclusion that we didn't think that, you know, they would turn folks away who don't meet that criteria, but that it would provide folks um, 
a safe and nurturing space to join as a community uh, where, where, you know, they know that they'll be accepted. So I think, I think we were right last year and where we came around to saying that that, that did not exclude them, but I, I'd open up to anyone else who wants to add to that. So do we know if the barn theater is accessible or does anyone have had a contact? Um, <laughs> I don't know that, you know, the building or that it's the, our best use of time right at the moment to make sure, you know, what was the accessibility comment that you made, Matt? If you can't talk about the again. grantee, um, I guess. Um, no, no, there were several uh, in the budget. There was um, to make it more lighting, uh, improving the lighting for the crafting, which yeah. I can imagine is an issue for weavers. Um, an adjustable weaving bench so that everybody who comes can view it yeah. safely. Um, then she they had an accessibility this statement, this access statement. Um, mm -hmm. I will include a, a ramp that can be placed. I mean, this is all right in the uh, book, Robert. Okay. I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. She says there's a ramp that'll be placed at the entranceway of the barn on request. As somebody navigating chronic pain, I realize the importance of. Um, yeah, so I mean, I you know I. I, I I felt like this just represented sort of a real strong attempt. I mean, I, yeah, you know, I, 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 I get that. I do get the concern about the barn, but I, I think she's being as thoughtful as she can about that. Um, with that, because I think that does indicate that it, it meets criteria, if not in some ways exceeding it, um, would we all be okay with, with putting down 850 for now? Uh, I don't know if we'll truly have that much. So we're at time too. Thank you. All right. So moving on. Um, the next is um, the Pioneer, Pioneer Valley Symphony uh, is presenting the mysteries of the missing music uh, April 13th at Greenfield High School Auditorium. And they are asking very reasonably for $350 and expect to serve uh, 1,050 people. Um, so Overall, we scored we scored this as a two point oh seven so two, and um, this is now going on for twenty nine years. They've provided a free six week music program to third and fourth grade classes in the region. The program's designed for educators and students, and the curriculum packages are delivered to schools, including a workbook for each child. Um, and the musicians visit the classroom to teach students about their instruments and prepare students for a live concert experience. Um, this year, it's uh, the Mysteries of the Missing Music, and uh, which was created by a composer, Jordan Kuspa, specifically for Pioneer, Pioneer Valley Symphony. And it will be performed, oh, it was performed virtually during the shutdown in 2020. To ensure accessibility, they're going to provide materials in digital and print formats and distribute a video of the concert to be freely streamed by classrooms and families. So comments here were, it really doesn't uh, provide much benefit to Amherst, uh, particularly, and that the GPS is specific, it, it's small support um, for Amherst homeschool. Um, so I will open up the conversation there. That that was my comment about. I mean, this is a great program, but it's it's for Greenfield Public Schools, and I I felt like the Amherst homeschool thing was maybe a little bit of a throwaway. Like I I'm not sure that they're actually that they have access to those homeschooling families and mm -hmm. are actually recruiting them. So, you know, I mean, I'm all for Greenfield kids. But yeah. I just don't see we have our own school system with our own, you know, comparable That's, number of students in it. It's just hard for me to see this as being within our I might be missing something about the structure of it, but I don't see it as being within our group. No, that's that's kind of my thought as well. And and really, when you when you look at the number of requests we have from from our school system, um, it's it's hard to to justify that the community benefit is is specifically there more so than it than it is. Um, you know, for when, when our schools apply to us, you know, there's, you know, no doubt then. So I'd be fine with saying it doesn't meet, meet our criteria. I mean, 
it's a little sad because you know it's it's nice stuff but it's it's i, I don't see you know a, a clear path to how this is benefiting amherst kids the same way okay next um john john root um has two back-to-back -back, um grants and he can only have one um there's mushrooms of the northeast and um there's also edible perennial gardening and landscaping one's at the amherst senior center one's at the jones library um he's asking for 400 for the senior center event and 500 for the jones library event um i before going into these i would suggest with the number of senior center grants that we're already considering that that we um don't deliberate that one and just go straight to to the other one if for some reason we we decide that we are we're not funding um the jones library one we can revisit the other all agreed great thank you okay so let's talk about ed edible perennial gardening and landscaping which is a science cultural presentation this one was scored um did I, I think I skipped over one, but let's stick with this because we're here. We scored this as a two and um, it uh, serves about 30 people. This is a 90 minute PowerPoint presentation describing the woody and herbaceous perennials that provide edible fruit, nuts, shoots, foliage, and roots and are handy in our region. Participants will learn how to transition from lawn or weeds to mulched beds where these trees, shrubs, and herbaceous perennials can be established with minimum competition from weeds and unwanted vegetation. Um, so an added benefit of this is not only can you learn about something, but you can feed a family. So <laughs> um, uh, I, I, I would champion supporting this. As would I, it's pretty, pretty unique uh, for us too. Yeah. Um, would everyone support fully fully funding this one if possible? Or yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, I I do, Julia. Great. Thank you. All right. So I'm going to go back to uh the Porter Phelps Huntington Foundation uh and their Wednesday folk traditions for 2023. Uh this occurs uh Wednesday evenings, June and July. Uh, at the museum in Hadley, they are asking for $1,500. They expect to serve around 2,000 folks. Um, collectively, we scored this as a 2.5. Um, doesn't surprise me. This is, you know, a strong, ongoing, well-supported uh, event. Um, <clears throat> so uh, one comment here was, um, Sorry, I'm in the wrong one. No, there were there were no no comments other than uh, someone said that admission is twelve dollars. So, um, <clears throat> uh, the Porter Phelps Huntington Museum will present the forty second season of its Wednesday folk traditions concerts um, during June and July. Seven folk music performances. Performers are selected from the region's rich mix of ethnic folk music ensembles. They have established reputations in the wider music field. The concerts are designed to highlight the region's heritage and to introduce the cultures of various ethnic groups to residents of Hadley and the greater Pioneer Valley area. Um, it's performed in the Sunken Garden, which is chosen for its accessibility and ADA facilities are provided. Um, and they hope to attract families by providing reduced admission for, for youth. And I, I believe it also goes to support the upkeep of, of the museum. I don't know if anyone can, can speak to that. So we do have quite a bit of music. I do believe that, you know, uh, in its 42nd season that yes, truly Amherst residents uh, do frequent and enjoy and it's, you know, many performances. Uh, I don't know that we have the full 1500 though. Would anyone like to comment? Yes, Robin. I support as you know, 
funding it as much as we can above 50 percent let's yeah. say mm -hmm. um it, it does they really are hurting and whatever funding they get definitely helps them and it's a great program and people do go to it mm -hmm. yeah yeah i think as far as full funding of of music you know we're we're really up against it it's a lot of music but hey i guess that's because people like music um so would everyone be in line with putting down twelve hundred dollars for this and seeing where we end up okay excellent thank you uh the next is uh self-evident education the power of truths and art education um it would be March 24th to the 25th at the Bombic Center for the Arts and Equity in Florence. They're asking for $1,500 and expect to serve 500 people. Um, collectively, we scored this as uh, a 1.8. Um, so there are you know, clearly some reservations here. Um, so folks are citing in the comments that, okay, it's in Florence, so it's out of the way. It's a great grant. Um, worry about the feasibility of finding uh, even 50 Amherst residents to fulfill the proposed use of funds. So this is a conference and it's being organized for March, April. Um, they had an inaugural conference uh, June of this year, uh, part educational conference, part arts festival, part homage to the long and powerful history of social and anti-racist activism of Western Massachusetts. They're seeking to bring diverse peoples together. Their guiding principle is that art and education can push conversations about multiple truths and about the power of those truths um, can help uh, us to build better and more um, a more liberated future. So uh, they've chosen Florence, Massachusetts uh, as the location because of the history of abolitionists and feminist activism and their hope is that the event will grow and be able to reach more people from more communities. So I guess they're speaking to our, our regional um, uh, guideline that we, we added this year. So um, is there anyone who would like to, to champion uh, this event? I, I'll just chime in. I, I was the one who made the comment about the attendance numbers. I. Um, I think this is, you know, a low partial for us just because of the distance from um, from town and I mean, mm -hmm. Amherst is doing a lot of work in this area. So I think we should we should support it. Uh, one mm -hmm. second, Brent. <laughs> but um, probably on the low partial side is my feeling. Sure. I, I would agree. Um, and they did apply to two other councils, Northampton and East Hampton. Um, and they said that as far as you know if they're not fully funded um i should know where this is on these things by now um budget mm -hmm. they basically said that if they're not fully funded they'll expand the list of local businesses foundations and individual donors from who we're seeking funding okay that sounds like a good idea um so how how low a low partial were you thinking of? I mean, I, I do think it's important to to provide some support. I don't think it's it's uh, you know outside of our guidelines. No, no, it's it's definitely not outside the guidelines. I just I think the fees like I said the the feasibility of getting sure the the attendance question I think is a big one for me. Um, I I'd, I'd say twenty five thirty percent. So I, I was thinking more like. I don't know, 300? That's 20%, right? Yes. Could I say something about the budget? Doesn't make a lot of sense. So I'm not sure if it doesn't make sense or they didn't understand. Because yeah. I, I mean, appearance fees, keynote fees. I, I wonder how many people are included in the 15,000 admin tasks, 1,000, space and equipment re rental, 8,000. I don't know, $2,000 worth of flyers, advertisements, and we can't even touch the 4,000 for food and hospitality. Um, but- Look at what they already have from 2022, 
they have 11,500 and 60,500. I apologize. Boy, between your dogs and my kids, I'm, it's amazing yeah. that we're going to make it work our way through this. At least your like, kids are cute. That wasn't cute. <laughs> oh, no. for... My kid is actually asking. He wants to know the names of your dogs. Oh, that's Otto and Fuji Apple. Otto and Fuji Apple. Mm -hmm. Those good names. Because mm -hmm. Otto's an Ottoman. Mm -hmm. All, right. Mm -hmm. All right. Moving on. Um, I'm not even clear what they're. Yeah, I. That's one of the reasons I'm saying around, uh, you know, three hundred because the the budget is is yes. huge, and, oh. and I would need a lot more detail to understand, you know, that large of a budget. Is there anyone that feels three hundred is excessive here? Okay, then then with that, I think we can we can move on. Agreed. Okay, great. Thank you. Uh, the next grantee is the Seven Arts Concert. It's their 55th anniversary season, July, August of 2023. It's at the Worthington, Massachusetts and your town virtually. And they are asking us for $1,000. Um, and this is um, something that, to, to be clear, we declined last year um, for not having enough community benefit. It was only scored at a 1.14. Um, and uh, this, this group, as I recall, I think they're out of around New York city. Um, so they're, they're, they're not local. They come to the area. Um, but there's little here that su suggests that, you know, Amherst is really going to, to have much benefit from it. So is there anyone who does believe that we, sh that it meets our guidelines? <clears throat> But no, I, I think it meets our guidelines. I just I think it's another one of these, you know, kind of um, commercial ventures that says if a community doesn't have what we're offering, you know, here's something that it probably is pretty high quality. I just again, I think, you know, it, it's the sort of thing that doesn't have the local impact that funding a local artist or a local organization would do. Yeah, I, I, I would would fully fully agree, which to me means there's just not enough community benefit and so are we all okay to to deny this one? Okay, thank you. Uh, the next is, it's again at the Barn Theater and Studios. This is the Silverthorne Theater Company performing Born With Teeth, a theater Thursday's reading uh, that will occur May 11th, 2023. Uh, they are asking us for $1,500 and expect to serve 60 people. Um, and this is, I'm sorry, I think I skipped over one again, but let's stick with it. We, this was uh, a, a 1.9, so there were some reservations about it. And uh, they're suggesting that this will, sorry. Um, I'm back. I know where I was now. Okay. <laughs> so uh, the comments around this were that it were in Belchertown. Uh, one person said it's a great organization and proposal, but would love to support, but it's a large ask for the projected numbers served. And another person said, yeah, large, large ask, but great group, small audience. So uh, this theater company has uh, presented an annual series of Theater Thursday play readings. Uh, these are free staged readings and they're focused on playwrights local to Western Massachusetts. Uh, their voices are underrepresented in theatrical production. Um, and this year they're producing Theater Thursdays in Hampshire, Hampton, and Franklin counties um, as they work to create more access to free and affordable theater for everyone in Western Mass. So um, Born With Teeth is by local playwright Liz Duffy Adams, and uh, it's a dynamic two-character historical fantasy that explores the relationship between William Shakespeare and Kit Marlowe. It's funny, thrilling. It's a little heartbreaking and we're delighted to feature it. Uh, the event will feature a post-show discussion with the playwright and director and audience. And um, with that, I have I, yes. I, so I, I just want to chime in. Um, 
in terms of the regional benefit and sort of encouraging regional collaborations, I've seen a few of the things that they put on the Silverthorn up in Greenfield, and it's a really fabulous group, really high quality stuff. And the sort of thing that I think Amherst doesn't have a, a ton of, you know, theatrical productions that, that go on in town. And I realize this is Belchertown and not Amherst, but again, it's a, it's a pretty quick drive from downtown. Um, and I was also the one that said that 60 is kind of a small number served. But mm -hmm. that being said, I, I would like to do, you know, 50% plus on this, just to indicate support for bringing a group like that, which is, they're not some kind of, you know, huge, hugely funded professional level group. They're, they're professional level, but it's um, bootstrap kind of a group. I would love to bring them down into, you know, this sort of lower valley type area. I think it's, it's really good work. And yeah, I, I think it's great. Although I, I do want to say as far as how much we're going to fund, they did apply to uh, Belchertown, Pelham, Palmer, Ludlow, and New Salem. So that puts it at six LCCs that they they applied to. Um, I don't I don't know that we should really go the full the full half here from that perspective. Um, because they're asking us for fifteen hundred out of one thousand eight hundred fifty. So that that doesn't quite add up to me if they're getting grants coming in from other folks, but I'd, I'd like to, you know, strongly support this. So I, I, I think half might might be, you know, more in line considering if we put in, you know, seven hundred and fifty. Hopefully, five other um, LCCs will put something in. That makes sense yes. to me. Yeah, yeah, Robin. Um, I also support supporting it as long as the barn is fully accessible which i'm not sure that it is um and that this is a great opportunity and if you've never been to stage readings it's mm -hmm. it's a really it's a very different experience and you get to talk to the people involved in producing the play and it's i think it, it's great and from what i hear this is a great group just um yeah how much yeah and the accessibility possible yeah accessibility. is there anyone who's not okay with with 750 given you know that it, it we would expect the other lccs to put in i did the i just did the math by dividing by six and because it's for what 60 people mm-hmm yeah. So, um, I mean, I'm fine with what you all have said, but I, I think that just in the interest of um, having applied, and I, I guess one question is we, Amherst usually has more money than other LCCs to mm -hmm. grant to, right? Yep. So that's, that's a consideration too. So, but I'm fine with what, you know, the majority of the group wants to do in this case. I, I think it's, it's unique in that, you know, it, it is, it's not just, um, from this point of view, going and experiencing and, you know, being in the audience and the discussion, but it's also that this is a local playwright, you know, and, and their work is, is being presented, you know, and um, I think they make a good point about there are playwrights that, you know, we should celebrate from our area that could lead to, to more long-term, you know, cultural benefits. So, if no one's opposed, I'll I'll leave it at the 750, and and you know hopefully we have have um, that much to to put towards it, um, but we might have to adjust it. Any other comments? Cody, do you have your hand up? No. Okay. Okay. Uh, so I need to go back one, which is. Uh, we have the grant from Yusufa Sidibe, and this is his virtual live African music workshops. He's planning for it to occur from January 1st to February 28th and to air it on Amherst Community Television. He's um, asking for uh, $2,400 and expects to serve 20,000 folks. Uh, comments here are poor track record. Um, another person said um, they would, would have encouraged them to apply to other places. Uh, another person said um, there there have been years of uh, grant applications and no events have occurred and it's not confirmed by Amherst Media. Uh, 
I guess, again. So um, I'm going to, uh, bef before I get into this, just is there anyone who believes um, that this really truly meets our guidelines and based on, on past track, track record uh, is something that we should support? Any comments? Uh, I'll just I'll just speak because you know I think you're being um, diplomatic, Dad, Julia. Hey. I think you're being tactful, but um, this this grantee has given has been very challenging to work with, and we've really extended you know tens of hours uh, of time corresponding with him trying to support these projects because he's you know he's he's a very talented artist and. He's made great proposals the past couple of years, but we haven't seen any execution. So I, I can't support funding for this. Yeah, sad, sadly, I would have really liked to have seen this come together. I see a but, uh, especially that the one. direct granting Look at model. that face. Hmm? Look at that cute face. Oh. No, I a picture. Yeah, I, I think with the direct granting model, you know, and the, and the track record, there's really no way to be able to, to you know, even partially fund this with any expectation that anything would, would uh, occur. So, okay. Um, let's see if I can actually manage to go in order anytime here soon. Um, the next one is uh, Society to Benefit Everyone Incorporated. Uh, the group name is Common Good, and it's called News from Tomorrow Morning. It's a pilot for September um, of 2023, and it would be on community t uh, TV, uh, YouTube, and at the Jones Library. They're asking us for $1,730 and expect to serve 5,000 people, um, and uh, we scored this at uh, a, a 1.43. There were uh, certainly some some concerns here. Um, so we have comments of no resumes or web links, very much in development, uh, maybe a small grant to, to support the idea and see if they're motivated um, to get it up and running. So um, in this in the style of typical mainstream new, newscasts, news from tomorrow morning broadcast, news reports of inspiring trends and events that haven't happened yet. We're just beginning. The stories are presented in the present time, like the summary, uh, as though from a future reality with interviews, field reports, and discussions to create uh, both for the viewer and for the featured nonprofits and entrepreneurs a vivid experience of brighter futures in the here and now. Um, as Sir, as Sir Van, what's, somebody say it for me. Cervantes wrote, uh, when we dream together, it is the beginning of reality. Each episode is presented on the community television and in, in the public libraries. The in-person presentations feature Q&A with artists and featured nonprofits and entrepreneurs. And artists uh, also invite audience members to share their own dreams and visions for the future. It's the proposed project is to create a 30 minute pilot episode of nurturing visions. So um, I agree with, uh, with uh, the the comment of of it being um, really not supported without resumes, web links, and and um, but it, it's it's an intriguing idea. Would anyone like to uh, champion this one? I'm kind of looking through to see if we have any kind of, um, is, is there nothing from the Jones Library? I, um, Julia, my note was, this is similar to uh, last year, the reparations group. They wanted to do a big, they had a big documentary proposal around the work they've been doing. And again, it was, you know, a multimedia thing, pretty ambitious in scope. And we gave them a, a grant to, um, I think, indicate support and sort of, you know, it wasn't a de de seed money development grant intended that way, but it, they wound up using it that way. And, you know, I, I think this is a really cool vision and a really cool idea, but 
um, given, you know, given how ambitious it is and how few supporting materials I see, I think, you know, a small grant to just sort of give them maybe a little, a little support and, and sort of a, a, a kick you off kind of idea. Um, Cause there's a lot of yeah. community benefit here if they can pull it off. I just, yeah, uh, I, I don't. Yeah. I, I, I'm a little concerned looking at the budget. The entire budget is three artists and $6,300 for three people without planning out any, any other expenses. Uh, and that, yes. that's, you know, $2,100 per person. So that's really problematic um, from my perspective. I mean, I know it takes a lot of time to make a 30 minute pilot, but um, as far as community benefit, I, I don't, I don't see how we could, you know, really, you know, put very much to, towards this. They did, they, they are kind of casting a wide net. I, I, I'd say this is a dozen to 15 different um, councils that they're applying to. Um, I, I'm actually looking at this from the point of view of, you know, with the direct granting model, I'm really cautious about whether there's there's public benefit or whether this anything would happen with this at all. Um, so I, I'd consider not not funding it actually as cool as it sounds I, I i just really don't have much confidence in it sadly anyone else have any comments so i i hear those concerns i think those are definitely valid concerns um we would want to think through I just think we would need to really think through which guidelines they're not meeting when we decline them. Um, well, they, they don't really have a date or a location other than YouTube. I mean, I guess at the end of the day, we can always just say that it doesn't have as much community benefit as other applications, and, and that is a valid reason. Um, I don't know. I, I, I definitely take your points. I just think a little bit of support money to see if that'll help them get off the ground would be helpful. Uh, I mean, if, if folks feel strongly, I, I, I can be swayed, but I also feel as far as like reading through this and having, you know, gone through several of these for several years, um, that, that the likelihood of anything like what they're even describing coming to pass, if, if anything is, it seems, I, I'm, I'm just, I'm lack confidence and, you know, there's really nothing other than them saying, hey, we're going to do this and we want $2,100 for each one of us and there are three of us. Am I being harsh? Um, I just, just quickly, I um, had in my notes to give them a little bit, um, not so much, I, I don't think I was thinking the, along the same lines as that, but, but I think it, it could turn out to be the same way. I was just thinking that if we wanted to support it, I would um, just give them a small amount and say it's for um, supporting accessibility. Um, yeah, we don't. We don't really get to specify what they what they use it for. Okay, um, then you know whatever. But so they they are applying to twenty four LCCs. Um, we have five seconds left yeah. so, um, this round, but go ahead. Uh, how about I put in for, for $100 and we can come back to it in the voting meeting. Sir, that that's, uh, yeah, 24 LCCs. That's around $75 each. So it's a little bit more than that, but okay. Thank you. The next is Special Needs Advocacy Network, uh, and their project is Outcomes. It would be from January to June of 2023. It's virtual, and uh, they are uh, asking for $500. We scored this at a 1.4, um, and uh, so there's some some concerns. We did de not decline this last year. Uh, it's a well-established advocacy organization. If uh, they're moving towards more of a creative lens, it would be good to see some evidence of, of that in, in their efforts to advance. Um, somebody 
else commented uh, virtual NFTs competition. So uh, this uh, group is focusing on efforts called outcome. It's um, the definition is uh, outcome is something that follows as a result of consequence and they're trying to prepare children for the future of independent living and employment uh, with uh, further education and um, basically they are saying that they're going to use art to celebrate culture uh, of those with disabilities by showcasing the aspirations of children with disabilities 3 to 12 um, and that that there are 242 of them that have been identified in our town and, and through social, social media, media outreach, outreach they'd be invited to put a piece of digital artwork representing their their vision um and all submissions will be showcased in an online gallery so um again i think this is this is one of these that's going out to you know just about every lcc um and i i Personally, I'm concerned that I don't. I don't think they've actually they actually have the connection, you know, with the community specifically to, to, to work with our community. So I'll open it up to uh, folks for comment. I I was fine with denying it last year, and I I would deny it again this year. Yes, Rachel. Sorry, I think I must be looking at the wrong spreadsheet because on the one I have, we scored a three for this. Um. It might, can somebody please correct me because we're looking at item 72, right? On the spreadsheet. Mm -hmm. You must have the wrong one because it's a, a 1.43. It's 71. Oh yeah, I'm looking at the wrong one, sorry. The numbers, the numbers on the spreadsheet don't line up with the numbers on the pamphlet. 72. For the panel. Spreadsheet. Okay, got it. Okay, thank you. Sorry. Is there anyone who believes this fully meets our guidelines and I think and provides enough community benefit? I think it's, um, I think Matt, you, you shared quite a bit about this last year as far as, you know, there, there are other types of funding that are more appropriate for this. And um, yeah, I, that's right. And I, you know, that being said, they are a, a important organization and do good work. And so um, I, but again, it's a, it's a big ambitious ask. Um, and I think if they're going to enter into more creative, a creative sphere, that's the kind of thing that an organization, you know, this size and this kind of work, you know, um, we, I mean, I was the one who said, like, I'd like to see what some of the efforts are towards creativity beyond sort of funding requests, you know? Yeah. And I'm, it's it's basically saying that hey if you give us five hundred dollars this will enable the two hundred forty two children with disabilities and their families in your community to celebrate their unique culture through art, so it it strikes me as as a bit strange, um, and I, I I don't think there's any real nexus with with our community. I think they're just asking every community to participate, and. A, the community benefit piece, yeah, it's important work, but how, how is it going to happen if, if they, they don't have any support from our community to begin with? Yeah, I, I don't think that inviting, you know, basically they would send a letter to the school district and say, you know, hey, please pass this along to the kids with disabilities. If they want to give us some art, we'll show it, case it in our online gallery. I, that, that to me does not really yeah. feel like a local benefit. No, I, I would agree. Is there, are we all agreed that um, there's not enough local benefit for this? Okay. Thank you. Okay, so now we'll do 72. And yes, this was well supported. The number I have for this was a 2.57 for Starlight Youth Theater uh, presentation of Matilda that happened in April of 2023 at Amherst Middle School. Um, they are asking very reasonably for $700 that would um, and expect uh, 300 people to be served with this. Um, so um, the comments here were that there's a $300 uh, participation uh, cost and another 
person said, should uh, should this maybe be funded by the school or another entity? I, I can speak to that quickly. It's, it's um, I believe they're renting Amherst Middle School to present this. So it's not really, it's not school sponsored or anything like that. That's just their, their space. So um, they'll be presenting the musical Matilda, and it's a cast of um, third to sixth grade students and are excited to participate and show their work to family, friends, and, and the community. So this is an independent organization uh, that provides the opportunity for kids to uh, perform a, a musical theater. So um, I, I would champion, champion fully funding, funding this. this. You know, I you know you grew know, up in a community that didn't didn't, didn't really have many many things like this. And you know, years ago, living in the New York City area, you know, um, or my my one of my daughters was able to do stuff at like the George Theater and Rutgers and stuff. But a lot of communities don't have a lot of opportunities like that. So I think this is a great group with a great track record, and um, I'd like to to fully support them if we can. I'd support that too, fully supporting. Same. Any, any, any further discussion? If, if so, let's just hope we have, have that much to do, do it. it. Okay, thank you. Uh, I just wanna thank you all. We're at, we're at seven o'clock. So we're two thirds of the way through here and we're making you know really, really great progress tonight. <clears throat> uh, next up we have uh, Paul Sticka. Um, this is his Strong House Concert Acoustica uh, for summer of 2023. Uh, it would be performed at the Amherst Historical Society Strong House. He is asking for $750 and expects it to serve 100 people. Um, this was scored at a 2.4. And the comments um, were, uh, one person said, it, we should confirm that this is not also funded as part of the strings at strong grant. I think it's different. So um, the description is um, this is someone who's passionate about promoting artistic, original music inspired events. Um, in 2022, the Acoustica Band performed a concert at Strong House for the public, which was really successful. They'd love to have the opportunity to perform there again and increase the awareness of the performance. Uh, via original music and would greatly appreciate your support to do so. Uh, the project includes performance uh, by the Acoustica Band in the Americana music format, uh, which generally span rock, country, blues, folk, and it will be heavily involved in, oh, Paul will be heavily involved in promoting and publicizing the event via, via various uh, media outlets and will work with the venue, the venue contact, contact Liz Larson to ensure the event is successful and we have a letter of support. So, um, yeah, it's, it's more music, but, um, it is a different style of music and it is right here in, in Amherst and, uh, so it supports, uh, local performers. Does anyone know how many uh, musicians are in, uh, the band here? I, so I saw him play at this last year, which we funded and um, I think it's sort of, it's the Paul Sticka show, you know, he gets, he gets a group of, you know, five or six musicians and they play sort of, you know, classic rock type stuff, mm -hmm. um, strings, but it, you know, it's great. And he's, he's very easy to work with. Uh, he does what he says he's going to do. He gets the stuff in on time. Um, it's not chamber music, you know, it's not choral and it, 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 you know, it's not, it's not like the most earth shattering thing in the world, but I do think it's a nice piece of the, you know, mm -hmm. cultural tapestry that we're, that we're trying to support. Yeah, my, my only reservation the fully funding it is just that it, music we have to look at you know music but it sounds great i guess the other question too i mean related to something i think maybe i forget who raised it is like um does this fall in the category of same venue for multiple things performances or because it's a different type of event um, yeah, this, you know this what is I mean? fair this this is fair as far as you you're right an app an applicant can only apply once but uh, I gotta I gotta hand it to the historical society that I think you know we should throw our support behind they don't they don't have nearly as many um, grantees um, citing their location um, as as some other locations we've been discussing so 
uh, it's totally fair because Paul's applying uh, for, for this grant uh, versus the historical society applied for the, the strengths of the strong. So the, that's that's fine. And you know, a net net benefit of this is when these events occur, it does you know offer an opportunity for people to experience the historical society uh and and also hopefully donate uh, you know to to their work um which we'd like to have go, you know so uh I, I i could leave it at the the 750 or we can we can nudge it down now because uh of anticipating needing to adjust uh for for musical performances i would be okay leaving it at 750 if that's not too much of a Okay. Yeah. All right. Any other comments? Great. Okay. Next, we have Catherine Stryker, who is applying for For Want of a Nail. And uh, this would be summer 2023 onwards at the North Amherst Library. Uh, they're requesting $2,000 and expect to serve 1,000 uh, people. This was scored um, at a two. And um, they're noting that uh, the North Amherst Library Extension is being built on a site of an old blacks blacksmith's shop, um, and that there are old iron horseshoes, nails, and other hand-forged items that have been dug up from the site. And uh, they show the skill and craft of the blacksmiths from long ago and are an interesting gateway into the uh, industrial history of the area that was known as the Dirty Hands District. And um, they're proposing an exhibition and sculpture at the North Amherst Library Extension uh, to attract um, attention to the vital role of the horse in agriculture and early, uh, early industrial communities. So the sculpture would be of a horse's head made from iron pieces and would be placed in the garden. And there would be an exhibit uh, highlighting the universal skill of the blacksmith, the centrality of the shop in the village, and the history of the horse through time. And these old horseshoes are a special legacy from our forgotten silent partners in the physical labor through the ages. So um, comments where it's a great idea. And we wish that, you know, we already had the artists lined up. Um, Someone said potential model for accessibility. Um, another person said, I think it's, is, is it lacking a letter of uh, confirmation? And it's a large ask, but um, sounds cool, but also not sure it would, would happen. There's no date. So um, would anyone like to champion this fascinating grant? I think this is really cool. Um, it's, a, it's a big ask, so I think I would not this down for all of it, but I think it's very cool, unique, and historical. And just to, to be clear, there's a thousand dollars in the budget for exhibition materials cost and preserving of horseshoes and another thousand dollars for the blacksmith to weld the sculpture. Um, just opening up the, the, the PDF. Um, yeah. Well, you, well, you do. I just want to say that um, she she does seem to be uh, a pretty impressive person, just in terms of like her equestrian accomplishments and such. Um, I'm I'm very much you know with Eleanor in terms of. I, I mean, I love the vision for this. I was the one who I, I wish the artists had been lined up, but you know, we I know Camille Peters, of course, is somebody that comes to mind as as somebody local who's done. Um, Really great iron work in town for for the Drake and for the um, the Emily and, and Robert Frost statue. So so he sort of somebody comes to mind. Like I, but but that being said, I think this is an awesome awesome grant. And I I actually would you know even without the artist explicitly named, I would trust that she could find you know somebody to do the to do the metal work. And I think she has a vision and an energy for towards this that I, I think is going to happen. You know, talk about feasibility. So the one big piece I think that's missing is any kind of letter of support. Um, like, will this have a home? You know, will, 
as public art? Is it is it guaranteed? I I actually voted to fully support this, and then like as we were talking, I said, oh, I don't remember seeing whether that has been approved in principle or not. You know, because that would be right because if it's a public um, installation, then some kind of verification or um, documentation, right, probably would be merited. Mm -hmm. so I, I love the idea too. I don't know what we want to do in terms of amount to fund or to fund. Mm -hmm. I mean, given what you just raised. Yeah. Um, that's, that's, you know, that is, a, that is a valid point. I'm sorry, that, that is a valid point. I mean, it's a public, space and she hasn't confirmed the support of the of the space i i don't know it's it's such a cool idea i cannot imagine you know the north amherst library not wanting to support this but you know by rights she really should have secured their support is that something we collectively feel strongly enough about to ask in this case I, I would personally, I would, I think, you know, I, I think it's, it's such a great public benefit. You know, it's the kind of thing that we really do want to stand behind. Um, I think it's worth ask, reaching out to her and asking if she's secured that support and if she can do so before next Wednesday. <laughs> yeah. Um, with that, you know, I really doubt that we can put $2,000 towards it. Cool as it is. Um, I, I mean, the this the strength of it is really great but i i think a thousand dollars would be a lot of money to put put towards it but it, it you know it i understand that creating this you know is, is going to to cost um so i think we should you know tentatively leave it on on the um budget here and plan for it and and, and hope we have this support but you know does anyone think that we're able to do more than a thousand does anyone think that a thousand is out of reach? All right, I will. I will leave it at a thousand, and then let's let's hope we can get confirmation. Moving on to the next, uh, the survival center um, here in Amherst is uh, planning their tunes at noon uh, music, which occurs from January uh, through December of 2023. It's always the third Friday of every month, and uh, they are asking us for $1,200 to serve 700 folks. And uh, we scored this really high at a 2.86, almost 2.9. And they, um, there's, uh, as far as comments, um, one person was con concerned, it's awesome, but um, maybe open to the public for a bit more. Another person said it's a large ask, but an important community. So basically, this uh, Tunes at Noon program highlights their commitment to feeding the whole person. So once a month, professional musicians perform a mix of genres uh, during their free community lunch. Um, and that is for 50 to 100 people of all ages who gather for lunch and those that are waiting for the food pantry and they get um, 60 minute sets in the main dining hall and uh, they had to pause this uh, indoor activity during the pandemic. And in September, they were able to reopen the dining room and resu resume with a full schedule of programs. Recently, um, while they played music during a program, a participant started dancing. She shared that when she hears music, she feels fully at ease. And they returned to live performances and they look forward to everyone um, feeling at ease at the Emmer Survival Center, a series of 12 concerts. Um, and it makes live music accessible to people in a dignified way. And the musicians also appreciate the non-traditional audience speaking to the impact that that had on them as well. Um, I'll say that I would uh, champion fully funding this. Any, any comments? I would too. I would three. Any other comments? Okay, thank you. Okay, next we have um, Joshua Swift. Uh, his grant is for developing site-specific dance live and installation. It would occur March um, through October and performances 
uh, would occur September through October, three to six total live performances that would uh, be at the barn studio, the barn and studio. You guys know what I'm talking about. Uh, they are asking for $600 and um, this was scored at a 1.6. Uh, it's supposed to serve about 130 people, but clearly there, there were some concerns here. It's um, uh, one person said Belchertown and it is dance. Another person said uh, it's original work, um, but dates and locations are, um, I guess, an issue. Another person said small grant to encourage further development. So this grantee plans to develop a site-specific dance piece at the Barn Theater and Studio. Uh, the project uh, will be developed outdoors and rehearsed. Uh, rehearsals will be filmed to capture the footage needed to create a video representation of the product project for wider audiences to view. It will take inspiration from the effects of climate change that, that it's having on our region and how to stay grounded and in relationship with the land and those affected. Um, the piece will be uh, built with choreography, dance scores, improvisation, and, coll and a collaborative process. And uh, they will create a work in progress video of the piece to be shown at a public location in Belchertown, Amherst, and surrounding areas, and hold several uh, live performances of the work in progress um, on site. Uh, so is there someone who would like to champion this grant? Yes, Robin. Okay. <laughs> um, as long as the accessibility issues of the site, although it sounds like it's gonna be outside, but anyway, aren't an issue. Uh, I think this is awesome, even though it's in Belchertown. And this is a disabled dancer mm -hmm. developing and choreographing dance and other people get to participate in that, see how he does that, be dancers, be, I mean, I, I think it's just covers so much mm -hmm. that we don't otherwise cover and that it's, uh, it's not a lot of money. Yeah, and, and they have applied to other grant, uh, LCCs for grants. Yeah. With most most of it coming from Belchertown and Amherst, which, you know, again, Belchertown, as far as being, the, you know, the neighboring town, I think people really do, you know, access arts and culture there from here. Um, yeah, yeah I, I, I'd support fully funding it if we have it. Um, Same. Other? I really like this. Yeah, great. Any other comments? All right, moving on to the next, we have um, sorry, I want to look at this one in the book because um, there should be a person on named on this. Primary contract. I think, okay, Amy S. Uh, Galinas is applying for the Gaia Roots Interactive World Music Concert and Workshop to occur at Amherst Regional High. Uh, so uh, this one is, uh, is scored high at a 2.79 and they expect to, to serve 500 people. Um, so this would be in the spring of 2023. They are asking for $1,000. Um, just a minute. Uh, the description of this is that um, uh, the, the World Music Drum and Song Ensemble Gaia Roots will hold an interactive workshop and concert event featuring traditional West African and Caribbean drum song and stories in collaboration with the special ed department at Amherst High. The program will be free to the Amherst community. Uh, Gaia Roots teaches and performs traditional drum and percussion rhythms from the Caribbean, West Africa and beyond blended with traditional songs, harmonies, uh, folklore, uh, dance and storytelling. So comments here were it's not a local applicant does that 
matter. Um, I can answer that. No, it, it, it provides community benefit. Uh, another person said, open to uh, the broader community. And um, I, I guess we often consider the events of occurring in the public school because it's, um, you know, as applicable to being, you know, the public. But I, I understand, you know, some some concern there. So um, is there anyone who would like to to champion this this grant? I'll, I'll say, you know, we really would like to do some African drumming type stuff. And I do believe that this is an event that, that will occur and, 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 and be successful. It would be nice if more people could potentially be in, involved. Um, It does say the so, target audience includes local community, but I'm, you know, not sure how that would work if it's happening during the school day. Sometimes they open these events to the public. Yeah, I mean, I, I right, I thought that was maybe more of a stretch, but I, that being said, you know, it's, um, as you said, African dance, world music, drum and song, um, and a great thing to bring to the, to the kids. So I fully support full funding. It does say the local community will be invited. Um, I, I'd like to see, you know, okay, there is a letter of support. So, yeah, I think there's a. It says open to all students, teachers, staff, local community music department. So I think it's open. Um, I'm not sure if there's an exact date, but I can't open the additional. They're they're saying that they'd like to invite Guy. I'm looking at the letter that they'd like to invite Guy Roos to perform and do workshops with their students. Uh, at the moment, they have a 40 minute block at the end of the school day. Um, I understand that because my my son's a sophomore, so they they it, it's not a problem to be able to to do this. You know, they can find a mutually agreeable day and make that happen. So, um, I support fully funding it. Yeah. I, I think a thousand's a lot. Um, let me just look at what they said as far as if they don't get the full amount. Um, I don't entirely understand how the, uh, their comment that if they're not fully funded, that they would do, oh, oh they would have fewer performance artists or the program may be shorter. Um, Again, I, I don't know how many um, stipends are supported with the $900 necessarily, but um, should we go ahead and leave this at 1000 It will pro probably have to end up adjusting things, uh, or should we go with a, a slightly lower number to start? I support fully funding it as well. Yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd like to. Okay, the next is um, Amherst ballet and this is the young choreographers sh choreographers showcase uh, and it it runs um starting mid-december 2022 so it's underway and they are asking for 500 dollars, and it supports 25 students um emerson ballet is holding its second annual young choreographer showcase which puts the tools of creativity in the students' hands, empowering uh, their agency, artistry, and self-expression. The dance pieces will be developed over uh, several weeks, culminating in an in-studio performance over the course of several days at Amherst Ballet Studio. And uh, the one comment here was um, that they, they don't think that costumes and props are actually necessary. That must be in, in the budget um, it cites here that um, the entire ask is is for costuming and props. So with, with that, I will open it up to comments. And I have, I have actually uh, come to the end of my term with Amherst Ballet and being on their board. So I'm no longer on their board, but I will, I will not make any comments because I'm a, a huge supporter of Madeline Bond. So, uh, but I will leave it to all of you to discuss. So who would like to start? I was the one who left that comment and I think I would actually like walk it back a bit or I don't know, I, I wouldn't take as strong of a stance on that. I think that I, I don't know, I just, I wasn't seeing it as like 
completely necessary to their programming but I mean I think that if we had the funds like seems like a perfectly reasonable and good thing to support so yeah thank you I, I don't have it in front of me, but this feels like a much smaller grant request from Amherst much. Ballet than previous years. And, and normally they'd so be I guess I would say over 2000 or so. So I guess I would say I, I sort of appreciate that or I'm, I'm intri intrigued by that. And I'd also say that, you know, they were probably the uh, they were the first and the most prominently displayed of our showcase videos. And, you know, maybe this reflects I'm not sure what this reflects. Maybe they're having a good fundraising year. Or maybe they're very appreciative of the video, um, but I, you know, I would certainly say in terms of community institutions is really important um, institution in Amherst, and I would I would absolutely fully fund this, to, you know, with no no questions about it. Any other comments? Um, just that when push comes to shove, is this one of the ones that we would consider lowering from fully funding? Based on some of the discussion or not. No problem. Would anyone else like to speak to that since I'm not speaking? Yeah. Yes, Robin. I think it's an extremely low ask. Um, and I even commented personally that I, I thought they should ask for more. Um, I mean, these are young choreographer showcase. I mean, what could be more of trying to develop kids to become artists? I mean, all right, I'm not I'm not supposed to be commenting, but I'm going to, which is the nuance here is that this is something that's in addition to other, you know, annual performances, and it is, you know, participatory and giving, you know, putting putting the, the creative um, process in the kids' hands. So you can all strike that that I ever said that, but you know. Why? That's, why I, that's what I was trying to say basically. I think this is exactly this what I want to have happen is kids becoming artists or appreciating art or being participating in art or and it's creating it. Yeah. Creating it. Yeah. It, I mean, it's everything that I hope kids do and I think we should support so Julia why will we have to strike what you say well I, I've been on the on the board so I'd much rather that the support of this isn't you know I'm not pushing it through I'm not on the board now but you know uh, uh, I see I see thank you uh-huh thank you are we good to move on thank you all right uh just a quick time check we are at 726 so um I think we can get one possibly one more through uh and what we have here um i don't know it's a it's a really large one so maybe maybe we want to table it we have um i guess uh what is it one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven oh well, we've got quite a few more to go through let's um it's just that uh, the next two are ones for the Drake and ones for the Emily Dickinson Museum. Those are both 2,500. We also at some point need to go back and do gallery A3, uh, their grant, because we didn't have a quorum. Uh, when we got to that one, that's another big one that's out there. So um, in, in the time we have, I don't really think that it, it would be effective to discuss you know, these rather large grants. Um, so I, I think I'll, I'll conclude, you know, reviewing and deliberating the grants now. And is, are there any other things that folks need to, to, to raise or discuss or just general topics for the last few minutes here? And thank you all. I think we're making great progress. Is it okay for me to ask what Julia's response was to what I raised the other night when I had to go? Or is that or can we not talk about it again because it's already been discussed? You you, you can ask, you know. I, I won't I won't make you go, you know, watch the whole recording. Look at, look but it was recording. just yeah. Uh -huh. It was just basically, you know, from the, from the point of view of appreciating that you'd like to, you know, perhaps do more more frequent, you know, you, you know, monthly or quarterly type events. Um, that 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 all sounds great, but uh, just from the the point of view of setting money aside to do that kind of thing in 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 2023 if 
we don't have it defined, don't have partners um, who are willing to to collaborate with us on that, that I just feel like we need to swing at what's in front of us. And, and I would fully support putting, you know, all of those funds that we were discussing towards the, the, the spring uh, arts and culture um, event, because we're just not organized to, you know, have an expectation of what those other things would, would be. So I wouldn't want to pull money away from something that, that is going to happen and that, you know, we, we can support and it will only be better. And lastly, that I think you might still have been here as far as I also was saying that these are grant funds that um, former grantees were not able to take advantage of. And I think that it's really equitable for us to put them towards an event like this that spreads um, the benefit throughout the community um, since those individual artists couldn't couldn't use it. Now we have a great collective uh, benefit for, for from the funds from their grants. Okay, that's I, a I agree with wanting to do more things like you said. Just I, I actually, I didn't hear any of your response because I had to go right away to take a call from elsewhere. So anyway, um, no, what I was just gonna say is that, um, what if I told you there were potential partners? Is it too late to be raising them? If it's something that all we had to do was invest the money and not do, not put our actual work into it. And that was something I was going to raise at a future meeting before we deliberate on the final total because of just a um, conversation. You know, if so, it, is it is it too late to be raising an idea for this round if it, if it only involves the council? Um, to vote in terms of the discretion, the discretionary amount of that of that budget. What I, what I would can suggest? You, yeah, can you tell us what it is? Um, it would. I haven't. I haven't talked to the people who would want to do this. Like we haven't sat down to talk about it. We we've you know it's just been floating around. It's, it would be something that would take place at the farmers market over the course of the summer. Um, so the um, I can I could. I could just, you know, let you know after I have just a conversation with um, the folks at the Mead Art Museum who might be, because, you know, they've set up there all summer, right? They've had their stand there. So if if there were something that um, we could do and just because they would they would provide the labor and the and the and the and the setup and everything else like that, it would just be a kind of a value add that would give the cultural council exposure is kind of what I was thinking, because you know, the people will see the, the cultural council is supporting something that's taking place at the farmer's market on a regular basis. So if, you know, if it's too late to raise something like this, or if, you know, because I take Julianne's point about money that wasn't used, but because it, there was just no opportunity to raise this because I haven't had any, um, um, you know, real discussion about what would happen and what would take place. Um, so that's why, because we're supposed to meet next week um, cause I, you know, like I would have been going to, I'm sure you all go to the farmer's market, right. During the summer. And you've seen, um, where the setup is, where they have kids doing artwork, um, that the mead does. And so if there were something that we could like collaborate with them on going forward, but like I said, I did, I thought it was premature to raise it to this group unless, until I had a better idea of what might be possible, um, do you have but, an idea of what the, the financial contribution from us would have to be for that? Or is that also undefined? I think, I think it's probably there's, I don't think it's going to be any huge amount. I, I think it's more along the lines of what might the cultural council be willing to provide? You know, you know what I mean? Sometimes it's like, okay, if you give me a hundred dollars, I could do this. If you give me Five hundred dollars, I could do that. Do you see what I mean? So there's there's been no discussion whatsoever about actual dollars because we haven't even had to talk about what are the possibilities, and and so that's part of the reason I haven't I hadn't raised the concept to this group other than you know of course we've all been doing the grant discussions too. So um, I am going to be speaking with them on Monday. And so if, you know, if it's too late to bring it up for this round, I understand that, but I'm still going to have the conversation. And Eleanor, that was something I was going to raise with you too afterwards, you know, like to say, hey, this might be happening. Would you be interested in talking to them more? So anyway. So is this a, 
um, were like hiring out the mead or would this be like a partnership or would this be like ACC led? I think it would be ACC supporting what the mead is doing in the community, um, for example, based at the farmer's market. So it's like it's like a town gown thing for them. Right. And it's um, so we'd be supporting that and we would be having the cultural council's name attached to this, which is, yeah. you know, great, great profile and publicity throughout the whole season that the farmer's market is running. So I'm just saying that like, this is a public meeting too. And, you know, I feel like I'm speaking a little bit prematurely because I don't know what the meat is able to do or is willing to do. So um, I don't wanna, but like I said, it's just it's just a preliminary conversation. And so if that's something we as a council are interested to look at, great. But, you know, I mean, there there's probably, um, so, so anyway, so that's, so um, I'll, I'll give it a quick, very quick response. I guess the, my two thoughts are, um, you know, if this is if this is something that our name is attached to, but it, it's not our activity, you know, all of our grantees are required to actually, you know, attach our name to their to their work. It's part of the publicity requirement of their final agreement. So I would say that two my two thoughts are if if Mead is doing something you think we should support you know, you can encourage them to apply for a grant. I mean, I, th I think that's sort of the, you know, that's sort of the structure that we work within. Um, and in terms, there's no harm, I don't think, in brainstorming activities that that we, you know, we put on and we intentionally do. And that was our, we had a, I don't know if you remember, we had a couple, couple of months ago, we had a meeting to sort of brainstorm um, activities we could put on. And, you know, I, I think um, that would have been a, a good time to, to talk about you know, potential activities that, that we would support. And, but I, and I understand Rachel, that you're still sort of in the exploration phase of the idea. Yeah, I hadn't come up at so that point. You, so, yeah, I said, you know, when you said two months ago, that hadn't, that conversation hadn't come up at that point. So it's just, so that I'm saying what it's conversation too late for this round or whatever, but um, yeah, have, have the conversation and yeah. let us, let us know where it is Monday. You know, I mean, yeah. if, if, if there's, just goodwill and no money involved, then, you know, great. You know, if, if it's, if it's small dollars, you know, and, and there's something that makes sense, but I think we just need to know more and, and really appreciate you, you know, ha having a conversation and certainly Eleanor, if there's anything um, that you can do to support during finals, which I, I don't suggest you do anything more than what you're doing, but exactly. yeah, let's, let's, let's find out. And, you know, I, I'd still feel strongly about, you know, supporting the spring block party, but I, I don't necessarily see the, you know, one taking away from the other. Um, but, yeah, I think um, it was, like I said, it was just one thing that had yeah. occurred to me. And um, I was hoping that, um, yeah, because I, was, I, I am aware of the end of the semester schedule and, you know, just having the preliminary conversation, I'm hoping, and I was hoping to be able to report to the yeah. group um, you know, when, when we have time. <laughs> So. Yeah, and I, also, I mean, I think we all like to see more more frequent events that are really bringing the community together, and it's exciting that that's something that we we can consider. But that, that that's got to be a, a a meeting agenda topic, you know, um, January, February, and and kind of really buckle down and, and get to some more long term planning around how we want to support the community. Yeah, Leah. Um, I was gonna say quickly to get back to Rachel at the block party. I was talking with the person who was running the mead um little station there, and I was talking about like I have a passion for like art, and I also have a bunch of experience like teaching kids and stuff. And there was kind of early talks about maybe like an internship opportunity in the spring at the mead museum, doing that kind of work, like what they do at the um farmer's market and obviously like I have I need to reach out with them and like kind of figure that out this is like not confirmed at all because I don't think it was like the main person I think it was like a student working there but um I might have some connections with that and if I end up doing that I could definitely like I don't know I just might yeah I thought it was worth saying great so you would be interning there you're saying hypothetically but um i'd have to like apply for that yeah they do take high school students too that's true yeah, yeah. so anyway but like it's just yeah i do have like background in like art education and stuff so see
Wonderful. Great. Well, we look forward to, to hearing more and, and to seeing what, what, what opportunities we may have and uh, if, if possible. So thank you so much, Rachel and, and, and Larry. Sorry to take up more of everybody's time, but. <laughs> hey, no, I mean, this, this is important. We want to be passionate about bringing, you know, opportunities to the community. So with that, I will, I will move to adjourn this session. Uh, are we all in favor? Excellent. Great work tonight, everyone. Thank you so much and uh, see you Monday. It's been fantastic. Take care. Thank you, everyone. Take care. Bye. Thanks, everybody. Good night. Nice.